Today I want to go through my top 25 AP ballot and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up Ken folks? It's RJ Young. I'm not on Step Milk. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's OU related college football related sports related. We have a good time. Today I want to go through my AP top 25 ballot. If I had one, I do not, but you'll get where I'm going with this. Because I, both, I also want to prove that you can do this and not look like a complete idiot. Now, number one, we're going to go through them. And then I'm going to give you some reasoning at some points where I think there's going to be some common contention as to my ranking. Number one, we got Ohio State. Number two, LSU. Number three, Alabama. Number four is Oklahoma. Number five is Clemson. Number six is Penn State. Number seven is Baylor. Number eight is Southern Methodist. Number nine is Minnesota. Number 10 is Appalachian State. Number 11 is Florida. Number 12 is Oregon. Number 13 is Auburn. Number 14 is Georgia. Number 15 is Notre Dame. Number 16 is Utah. Number 17 is Whiskey. Number 18 is Wake Forest. Number 19 is Cincinnati. Number 20 is Boise State. Number 21 is Memphis. Number 22 is La Tech. Number 23 is San Diego State. Number 24 is Texas. Number 25 is Michigan. Now, if you take a look at those rankings, especially as I've just delivered them to you here, you'll see I reward you for winning. Because that's what this game is about. It's about what did you do on the scoreboard? I don't care about your talent. I don't care how talented or not talented you think you are. I don't care how many resources you have at your disposal. I don't care how many people show up to your games. I don't care whether or not you play in the Southeastern Conference or the Sun Belt. I care about did you beat the folks on your schedule. All right? Now, I understand there's a lot of people that are going to take umbrage with Baylor being a top 10 team, Southern Methodist being a top 10 team, and Appalachian State in particular being a top 10 team, to which... I'll just go through it this way, all right? You got one job in college football. Win. That's it. It's win. Sometimes you get to pick which teams you schedule. It's called your non-conference. You get to pick which conference you're a part of, right? After that, it's who you played and how good they are on that particular weekend, going into it, whether or not we think they're a good football team, which is what rankings are. It's also the reason why I want a 16-team playoff, because I want everybody in that should be in. And I'm putting Appalachia State number 10 because they have not lost. They are the best group of five team left, but they're also one of the best teams left because they're one of the last undefeated teams after week eight. All right? So am I saying that Appalachia State could go into Death Valley, both of them, Owen Field, Sanford, and Bryant-Denny and get a win? Yes, because that is a central edict of sport. On any day, any time, anywhere you can go somewhere and you can get a win if you get a shot and that's all we're, we're asking for like alexander hamilton just give them a shot see what they got okay because unless you lose i think you should play for a national championship it's a privilege it's not a right the right to play for something is what we established at the end of conference that's why we have leagues you know like the folks that are saying hey man Michigan and Michigan State are always going to cancel each other out. Well, yeah, because they're playing for a Big Ten championship because they're playing for an opportunity to play for a Rose Bowl. And that's that's it. After that, it's all happenstance unless we put in a playoff. And even then, we're talking about 16 teams. We're not talking about 130, right? So in talking about Southern Methodist and Baylor, they beat everybody they're supposed to in front of them, okay? They'll have opportunities to lose this as we go. But I also get to the one losses, right? And it's about who you played, where you played, and how'd you play them. Okay, I got Florida at 11 because they went to Death Valley and they got beat by four, uh, 14 against an LSU team that many of us believe is in the driver's seat to make college football playoff as one of the top teams in the country because they skull dragged, tech, well, they didn't skull dragged. They beat Texas by seven and again, they beat Florida by 14. Continue to go down there, you see Oregon. Oregon lost to Auburn, right? Auburn is still a one loss team. No matter what you think about them, they went to Arkansas, dropped 51 on the Chad Morris experience. However, you want to draw it up. That's what happened. Then you get to Georgia. Georgia lost South Carolina, which is an unranked team in Sanford. It's a bad loss, right, compared to, compared to the rest of the one-loss teams, right? It's much better for Florida to go to LSU and lose by 14 than South Carolina to show up to Georgia's doorstep and beat them like they stole something, okay? Then we're talking about teams like Notre Dame that lost to Georgia in Sanford, all right, and uh, also their 10-game schedule. And then you talk about Utah that lost to USC, but it's contended well, right? Arizona State had an opportunity to make this list, but when you get 
down to 24 and 25, you run out of good one-loss teams. Hence the reason La Tech is ranked ahead, San Diego State is ranked ahead of traditional powers, Texas and Michigan. Now, Texas gets a lot of points here because they went and lost, or they lost at home to LSU, and then they lost to Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl, right? Those are two undefeated teams, two teams that I have in the top four, two teams that are going to play for a national championship, we think, right? We think. And same thing with Michigan, right? They go to Happy Valley, they lose, right? They get beat by a Wisconsin team that up until they lost to Illinois, we thought was going to be pretty good. Here I was gassing up Wisconsin. Here they're going to make me look bad by losing to Illinois. Illinois had two wins against UConn and Akron. Akron is winless. UConn got one win. Wisconsin, this is going to haunt you the rest of the way. That's why I dropped you so far down. That's why you're one of my worst one-loss Power 5 teams, if not the worst. Cincinnati gets a lot of points because they beat Central Florida and put an end to their reign of terror in the American, we think, right? Now, I could also continue to argue about the merits of one-loss teams versus two-loss teams in your schedule, but I don't care about your schedule because your schedule is utterly chance. When Oklahoma scheduled UCLA some years back, UCLA was a top-10 team. 2009, that team was a number nine team in the country. You thought UCLA was going to be good. Turns out they're not very good, right? You, that's out of your control. Same thing with your Sun Belt opponents, right? That's out of Appalachian State's control. But they did schedule an ACC team, and they did schedule an SEC team. They beat the ACC team that took Clemson to the wire. If they beat South Carolina, they would have beat a team that beat a Georgia team that most people thought was going to make the college football playoff. Appalachian State's a good football team. All right, I'm into rewarding teams for winning because at the end of the day, I don't want a selection committee full of athletic directors, retired football coaches, and dignitaries deciding what kids get to do who sweat blood and tears to try to win football games 365, right? I want the scoreboard to mean the most. I don't want you to sit there and say, hey, they played a tougher schedule than them. Well, man, that's out of the kids' control. I have less to do with uh, what your Power 5 ranking is or whether or not you play in a Power 5 conference to what the kids get opportunity to do. I want to give the kids chances to win. I want to give them a chance to go for the holy grail of college football. And that should not be about what we think with this elitist attitude. It should be about what did you do on the field? Because it's out of a kid's control who they schedule. It's out of a kid's control what conference they're in. If they come to be together to be greater than the sum of their parts, they should get an opportunity to show that on a national stage. Otherwise, you're going to have 2017 Central Florida rightfully claiming a national championship because they beat the third best SEC team that year. Do you want to see Central Florida get their head kicked in? Sure, right. Then give them an opportunity. A 16-team playoff ensures that. If you get an 8-4 team in there and they're a 16 seed and they're going up against an undefeated Alabama or Clemson or Oklahoma they should lose, right? Unless they don't. And as the reigning, well, not reigning, as a group of five mentality, a group of five sports media personality, I'm always going to ride for a group of five team. I'm a group of five team. I'm not even supposed to be here, right? I have been championed by you. I have been championed by folks all over and given a shot. So you give me an opportunity to go into Bryant Denny as a group of five to show everybody that they were right to believe in me, I guarantee you. I'm coming out with a W. And if I don't, you're going to be, hey, look, he went there. He had opportunity to win, didn't win. But like Appalachia State, up until now, we've been winning. And I think that that's just going to remain true. If Appalachia State loses in the regular season, we don't even have to do this anymore. But right now, that is how I see it. Win, don't lose. If you win out, you should have an opportunity to play for the Holy Grail, which is national championship, which is normally something we vote on and still something we vote on, which is stupid. All right, that's it for me. There's